Hello everyone and welcome for another Ekram foamed video. Today I'll be talking mainly about tube thoracostomy or chest tube insertion in the ED. I am Shahad Lami and I am an emergency resident. So again, before trying any procedure in the emergency, we should know the indications, contraindications and complications. So indications for having a chest tube is a pneumothorax, whether it's a tension, spontaneous or itrogenic pneumothorax, penetrating chest injuries or a complicated paranemonic effusion such as empyema. Most importantly, it doesn't have to be loculated. Chylothorax, hemothorax, and absolute contraindication to performing a thoracostomy is an emergent thoracotomy. A relative contraindication is coagulopathies, pulmonary bullae, adhesions, again, loculated empyema, skin infections over the insertion site. Okay, so moving on to the procedure. First, position the patient. Ideally, hands, Whatever area I am gonna put the tube in, the hands of that area should be behind the back, behind the head, or upwards as I'm opening the intercostal spaces. Another thing is position the head of the bed at 30 to 60 degrees. That will push our diaphragm downwards. Now moving on to sterilizing the area. As maximum as possible. My area of interest is the safe triangle. And so now I'll start draping whatever area is not needed. I have to uh, show the nipple so I know where I'm going. So this is a very painful procedure and thus we have to optimize the patient with local and systemic analgesia. It's very important how we inject the anesthetic with lidocaine. I will go to the skin, make a wheel, aspirate, put 2 ml around the area, 2 ml around the area, aspirate and push in. And then I go to the deeper surfaces, deeper muscles, until I reach the pleural space where I will aspirate and I'll see fluid coming out or air. Moving on with a scalpel, uh, hold it from here to stabilize. In our safe triangle, we make a two to three centimeter cut. Now with a Kelly clamp, bluntly dissect through the incision through the subcutaneous tissue over the upper margin of the rib until a rush of air or fluid occurs. Once this happens, you open the clamp and while still inside the pleural space, withdraw with the clamp still open. This is to enlarge the dissected tract of injury and allow easier passage of the thoracostomy tube. With a sterile finger, Go inside the incision into the track that we made and feel for any adhesions, feel for the lung, for the pleural space. Have an idea where your tract will be and take it out. For the chest tube, we're using a 32 French. This is mainly for hemonemothorax. Previously, it was done with a troker, but now it's safer to be done using a Kelly clamp. So we clamp it here, leaving this area blunt and measuring it from the apex to my incision area. I will make an, I will put another clamp. So when my tube, tube is inside, whatever fluid does not go out. With the tube and the cal cam, go inside through the incision, through the tract, superiorly, posteriorly. We remove the clamp, insert it further. Now we will connect it to the water seal. The water seal will be on the floor. And we remove the clamp. For the final part, securing the tube. We prepare our suture in a horizontal 
mattress fashion. Push the tube down so we do not penetrate it. I prefer using the Soweto tie. as it holds the tube the best, in my opinion. Moving the tube up. Now, the two ends of the thread, we have to make them equal. Cut the needle. Make an air tie in the middle. And now with the mosquito forcep, wrap this around and pull using the mosquito forcep at where the tie is. After this, we make the surgical stitch. And so on. After we're done with our suture, we'll put our gauze. And adhesive pad. So we're done with the procedure now let's talk about the complications. One of the most common complications is the improper uh, placement and that's mainly either in the subcutaneous tissue or below the diaphragm. Another complication is bleeding or me introducing infection causing empyema. Another one is hemoperitoneum, where I'm injuring the liver or the spleen. Re-expansion pulmonary edema is another complication. Subcutaneous emphysema. And lastly, bronchial tree injury.